Before we get started into our training sessions, I wanted to have you work on a very small project that will incorporate some of the very basic functions of AutoCAD. Don't worry about understanding everything you see here. This project is meant as a sort of icebreaker, like an activity at the opening of a party to help all of the guests get to know one another so they can enjoy themselves more. That's what I'm going to do. That way you won't be shocked when you see first all of the commands they're going to throw at you. But that's what I'm going to do with this one though. I'm just gonna sort of push you into the deep end and we're gonna do a lot of different things. So if you haven't started AutoCAD, go ahead and start. Now we want to open up just a blank template file. AutoCAD.dwt is fine. So if you have a file open already, you need to click on this little plus sign here called New Tab. This will bring up what's called the New Tab. Or if you haven't had anything open yet before, it should open up right here to this file for you. In any case, this is where you want to get to. Okay, so we're going to come to the Get Started button, and we're going to click down here where it says Templates, and we're going to select the AutoCAD.dwt file. Now, we're going to use a lot of different things. We're going to use some basic commands. We're going to use a little tool palette to insert some things here real quick, and we're going to use some of the function keys. Now, I want you to press F8. Now, it should give you a little prompt down here on the command line that says Ortho On. If you press it again, and it says ortho off, then that's not what you want. You want to press it just so that it's ortho on. F8, just like all the other function keys, are toggle switches. They turn different aspects of AutoCAD on or off. And you'll notice probably too, that this button here turns blue when I press F8 and it turns it on. If it's blue, it's on. If it's gray, it's off. Now I can also click here on the status bar to turn these things off and on. So whichever method you want to use, go right ahead and do that. But we want to use the ortho command. Now the ortho command is just a way of locking in horizontal and vertical movements. And that's what we want to do. Now we're going to start drawing a rectangle and we're going to use the rectangle command. So just type in on your keyboard, R-E-C for rectangle, that's short. That's a little keyboard shortcut. And we'll talk about those again later on, of course. This will just be a way for you to use your commands in a shorter way. You can get to them much quicker. Press the Enter key. Now pick a point, any point on your screen. It doesn't matter where. That'll be our first corner for our rectangle. Now we want to make this rectangle 50 units wide by 30 units tall. So you'll move to the right and up from where you first pointed at. Type in the number 50. Press the Tab key. That'll make it 50 units wide and type in 30, and that'll make it 30 units tall, and press Enter. Now take your mouse with the scroll wheel on it, and double click that scroll wheel. This will do what's called the zoom extents. It zooms all the way out, so you can see all of the line work in your file. Now if you scroll on that scroll wheel, that'll zoom in and zoom out. Now you can also pan around in your file by clicking and holding that scroll wheel. That'll allow you to pan. So you're gonna use that a lot. Zoom in and out, and pan, and then the double click to zoom extents. Now we're going to offset this rectangle because we're going to build kind of a wall for a building here. We're just going to offset it five units and we're going to offset it to the inside. So come up here to the ribbon. We're going to go to the Modify tab and we're going to go to this little button right here. That's called the Offset. Now you may have noticed that whenever you move your mouse over any of these commands, it gives you what's called a tool tip. It gives you the name of the command that that icon represents and then if you wait a few more seconds, it'll give you a little tool tip telling you kind of what's going to go on or kind of how to use that command. So if you don't know what any of these buttons mean, then you can just learn them by slowly moving your mouse over them and they will show you what the command is. So we want to use the offset command. So click it. Now we have to tell it the distance. Type in 0.5 for half of a unit. Press the Enter key. Now when you hover over the line, it's going to highlight. We're going to select it. The highlight lets you know which line you've selected. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to kind of show you what's going on here. You get a little bit of a preview of what's going to happen when you're using your command. So where I put the mouse at compared to the line that I selected to offset, that's where that's going to offset to. I want it to go to the inside. So move your mouse down, move it to the inside of our rectangle and left click. And there you go. You've just made your first wall for your drawing. Now to get out of a command, you can just press the escape key. Okay, so there is our rectangle command and the offset command. You're going to use the offset command quite a bit. Now we're going to open up a tool palette. We're going to do that by pressing the control key 
and the number three key both at the same time. So press control and three. But this is a palette and specifically it's the tool palette. It has a lot of different tabs on it, giving you access to a lot of different things. Now what we want is to get a door. So we're going to pick architectural and we want this door imperial button right here. Click it and then move the mouse over into your options right here. You can see this door is a little big for what we have drawn and that's okay. Now what you're doing here is inserting a block. We'll talk about blocks later on, but a block is just a set of lines or text or anything that you can create and it's saved together and it's set up as a block and a block is made so that you can easily reuse line work that you've created before. For example, like this door. So click somewhere on your screen and that's where it's going to be inserted. Now this door is actually set up for architectural units, which means it's going to be working with inches for its units. Now we've set this up the way we're using our drawing. Now we didn't set up units, but I'm using it in a way that it's using feet for its units. We'll talk about units and how they work in AutoCAD later on. Right now we're going to scale the door. We're going to make it a little bit smaller. So type in SC for the scale command, press enter. Select the door. And you select the door by moving the mouse right over the door or the object and then left clicking. And it'll turn to a highlighted blue once it's been picked. Once you've picked it, press return. And then just pick anywhere around here inside your door. And you can see when you move your mouse, it's scaling it up, giving it a big number. Now the scale command works in a couple of different ways. If you give it a scale value of greater than one, then the item is going to be bigger. If the scale value is less than one, then it's going to get smaller. But what we want to do now is type in one slash 12. We're scaling this by one twelfth. It's going from inches to feet. Press return. Now our door is normal size. Type M for move, press the enter key, pick the door, press the enter key again, zoom in with your scroll wheel, and we're going to snap to this endpoint. So we're going to type in END on the command line, just type in END, press return, left click right there in the door. Now you can see I'm going to zoom out with my scroll wheel and can move this door around wherever I want it to. I'm going to pan. You can pan and zoom with the mouse while you're inside a command. Now type in NEA. This is another O snap. We're going to talk about O snaps later on in depth. Snaps or O snaps will force your line work to go into specific places on your other objects. Press enter and then click anywhere on the inside wall. And so there we go. We've entered in our door. So zoom in, kind of center this on your page, and then let's type in the word trim, T R I M. Press return. And we're going to do a crossing selection. Pick up here in the top left somewhere and drag your mouse to the right and down. And it should be a solid line with a blue area. And as you do that, it's going to pick that door. Left click again, press return. And now we're going to click on these lines. What we're doing is removing the lines from our work environment. So zoom in here and get this little line too. That was the trim command, right click, press enter to cancel the command or press escape. The trim command trims things away. It cuts things away for you. So that's the very basics of AutoCAD. There are a lot of different little tools that we use there, but these are tools and a process that you're going to use all the time in AutoCAD. It's actually that simple. It may seem overwhelming to you right now, but that's okay. We're going to break all of these things down and look at them one at a time and go into details on how to use them and when to use them. And we're going to do that in this video.